Yeah, we know about that. All right, hi Joyce. I need you for XP. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? More lessons in basic reality? My favorite part of the day. Go ahead. Ask me anything. Uh, what is this? Spread your hands. Is he making the school bus pussy hand? <laughs> what is this? It shows you a picture of Goatsy. A bird? A Svenicid? A flightless bird of the polar regions? My ma'am, this is just hands. Am I really that awkward? Of course you're not, my dear. I'm just terrible at guessing games. Uh, I meant what is this place? Ah. This is the pier of Rue de saint Gislaine, 33A, where the tenants have been kind enough to rent me a slot. Or two. What is all that French shit? A pre-revolutionary tenement. Old buildings are called tenements, you see. And new buildings, bâtiments. After les bâtiments nouveaux. But 33A and 33B are not nouveau. They're old. This one used to be eight to ten stories tall. A real high rise by the standards of the last century. Built to mirror the skyscrapers across the bay in the Delta. That was before the war, of course. Who lived in them? Mostly the urban middle class, I believe. This was once primo real estate, before the cannons locked four or five stories off. Splat, splat. How is this bitch able to hear our conversation from all the way down there? Is Joycey yelling? Wonderful. Uh, what times are these? What is that? Point to Cindy. The girl in the old lady rags. Oh no, I meant something about basic reality. Looks like a sullen and rebellious member of a teen infraculture. Infraculture? Yes. You and I belong to the supraculture. We're common, the herd. The music on the radio, the food in the chain restaurant, those are all too popular for the girl in the old lady rags. Get her. She prefers a fantasy world, an infraculture with its own dress code and vernacular. It is an illusion, I'm afraid. There is no refuge from the supraculture. Okay, now explain the same thing, but to a child. Young people who dye their hair funny colors and wear old people's clothes are stupid, and their little rebellion is self-defeating. Well, it's over. All right. What next? Suddenly, you're not so sure you're part of the super culture. I feel like if Harry says this out loud, she's gonna, like, sail away. I think I may be part of the infraculture. And what would that be? Uh, cop, disco, I don't know, I just feel it. I still don't know what a fucking disco means in this. She lets out an unrestrained laugh, the crow's feet stretching onto her cheeks. My reality impaired colleague is not so far off. <laughs> My mentally unwell colleague. Many of the RCM's fashions, even weapon preferences, borrow heavily from classic Vesper time cop shows. My precinct alone has three officers who go by the name Ace. <laughs> but please, do continue this reality exploration. I was just remarking. Yes, let's. Still a quivering smile on her face. Well, I'm glad I made someone laugh. Uh, what is think of someone close to you? Please. It's 72. It remains a mystery Fuck what you me. mean by this something close. This isn't about you. It's about reality. Can you fuck off? <laughs> Seventy-two percent. 
yeah, that's 28% chance. But meanwhile, I did like a 13% check at the start of the game and I got right. Anyways. What is this acute encephalopathy? Uh, encephalopathy. I know that word. I just can't say it. It's a neurological disorder caused by a lack of vitamin B in the brain. Symptoms include a retrograde amnesia. It's quite serious. You should get yourself checked out. A vitamin B, eh? She conveys it in short, cold bursts, trying not to invest too deeply in the condition of this doomed detective. In case he goes down later, souring the entire portfolio. I know you've got a lot riding on me, I won't let you down. I'm not making that promise. Well, it's either bariatric surgery or long-term alcohol use. It's definitely the drinking. She nods slowly. Yes, and perform autoerotic asphyxiation on yourself with your funny necktie what? out in the open somewhere. What? <laughs> okay, I know that this game has some issues with suddenly, like, here's dialogue that does not fit. But also, I know that the necktie can just be like that. I think it fits in this scenario. What times are these? These are unimportant times, detective. You and I were born after the dust had settled. A thousandth of a second too late. Too late for what? For the big time. Okay, what's the big time? The revolution. Okay. What is this revolution I keep hearing about? It's quite easy. Every hundred years or so, our species gets together to decide what's next, who gets shot in the head, and who gets the mineral rights. It's a real... kerfuffle. Who got shot in the head? Those would be the communists. Generally speaking, 40 million people got shot in the head during the World Revolution. But the communists... They all got shot in the head. She's not gloated. It's a relieved celebration. Oh, and the anarchists too. They shot them well. So well, one forgets they even existed. Did the communists and the anarchists shoot back? Did they ever? Before they got shot themselves, they shot two million people. Sounds like they should have shot more people in the head, man. This does not represent the official RCM opinion. <laughs> Oh my god. <clears throat> Kim's like, please, please don't go around saying that to other people. RCM fully endorses shooting more people in the head. Don't worry. Klaus Mazov shot 15 million people in the head. But that was all the way over in Grad. <laughs> Anyone else shot in the head on the opposing side? Oh, lots of people. Even the king got shot in the head, or thrown beneath a horse, or drowned. Accounts differ. It was unceremonious. Just as well, he wasn't actually the king. Just the king's nephew. The real king abdicated and lived out a long and productive life as a venture capitalist in Grad. I love that king, fucking communist. Cowardly. I prefer the term risk averse. King Guillaume was nobody's fool. He could smell a PR disaster brewing. So he got out alive, and his nephew Frisell got shot in his place. Him and tens of thousands of his wonderfully fascist kingsmen. It was a wild time. Who got the mineral rights? The liberals got the mineral rights. And by mineral rights, I mean everything. Okay, and by liberals you mean? Liberals are usually middle class people, detective or the remaining gentry, the beneficiaries of the pre-revolutionary arrangement. Some were rich enough to stay with the constitution, with monarchy, big mistake. Others bet on the revolution, 
They were called the ultras or ultra liberals. They fared well. How did the libs win? They didn't win so much as survive. We were the last ones standing when the war ended. Everyone else got shot in the head, remember? Everyone else on Earth was shot in the head except for liberals. We. Oui. She's one of them. Of course. If everyone got shot, who was there to surrender to? To foreign intervention. The coalition. Those people really took the mineral rights. Wait, you just said the liberals already took everything. The liberals took everything that wasn't nailed to the ground. The coalition took the ground. The ocean, the laws, and the people. Who are the coalition? The coalition of nations. Grad, Mesk, Vesper, Messina, Oranje, and Sieur Le Clay, the armed center of the world. They landed here and ended the revolution. It was the moralist thing to do. Orange. There is bitterness in her voice, tempered with understanding. She is critical, but ultimately understands the cause. Moralist? The moralists believe in keeping everything exactly the way it is. They believe in mineral rights and not shooting people in the head. At least not in the same manner and volume as the others do. They are the long-standing provisional rulers of Revachol now, the coalition government. This is their zone of control. They embolden the RCM with crumbs of the same law they took. Technically speaking, you are a moralist. The color of moralism is blue. The official motto of Moral Intern, or Moralist International, is a blue forget-me-not, a piece of gray sky. Unofficial. For a moment, there was hope. Uh... I don't think I'm a moralist, ma'am. Not just technically, practically, for a moment, there was hope. Uh... If always picking the option that doesn't commit to anything, then hell yes I am. And also not. Hmm. A devout man of the center. Hard to come by. It's good to have someone who takes a moderate approach to head shooting. <laughs> In your line of work, I mean. I'm trying to both play as what Harry would actually be in this situation and my own center compass and morals. I'm willing to play into people's horrible ideas about things if it means that I can get the fucking gate open. Uh, you say it was a bunch of apes duking it out? Why, of course. We're talking Duke Out Central. Full swing, intraspecies warfare. <laughs> and the apes, were they evil? No. I would say the apes were neutral. They're good apes, actually. I... Oh, Harry. Okay, neutral. On the other hand... She turns north to the bombed out buildings lining the waterfront, then shivers slightly. Oh, when was this kerfuffle? The turn of the century revolution. <laughs> Don't answer it. It's a trick question. The revolution began in 02 on the Isola of Grad. Though, by the end, nearly the whole world had gotten involved. Who started it? It wasn't a who, <clears throat> but a what. A pandemic of Zarat, a particularly virulent prion disease, which the authorities in Grad proved unable to contain. Then Marzolf came along and overthrew the government. What did this thing do? She said it literally a second ago, and the pronunciation of it is already left my mind. Has already. It made people overthrow their governments. <laughs> <laughs> A disease that makes people overthrow governments? Wow, really? No way. Indeed. 
Zerat is a highly infectious microorganism that destroyed brain tissue. The actual causes of the revolution were material. The pandemic only provided the spark. Where did it spread from there? From Revachol and Grad? Not far. The world managed to cauterize itself. Mazov's government was overthrown in 08, and the coalition crushed the Revachol commune two years later. It was the end. And what came next? Why, you and I, officer. Our lives in the zone of control. Something tells you her life and yours are not that similar. Maybe it's because she has a boat and you have that necktie? A pair of pants? <laughs> and a crowbar. And gloves. Our lives are very different from each other. Uh, what is the zone of control? A city-state divided into free market zones under the everlasting interregnum of the Coalition of Nations. And you, of course, the citizens' militia. The clatter of typewriter keys fills the main hall of the reappropriated silk mill. Precinct 41. Chad Tilbrook presses enter. Outside, Officer Elfboy Williams slams the door of an armored motor carriage. The Zone of Control is the third incarnation of Revachol, after the failure of the Suzerain and the Commune. And what happened to the rest of the world? Modernity. They developed the marvels of the inter communication. Telematic milieus, radiation, colored plastics. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Revachol West, the aftermath continues for the fifth decade. Colored plastic. 51 minus 8 equals 43. Wait, you're saying it's been like this for 33 years? Time flies. And what have we been doing in all that time? The 20s saw a decade of urban war, west of the river leveled, offshore platforms in flames. Still, it's regarded as an improvement on what came before. 08 to 19 was simply hell. The 30s? Things settled down in the 30s. Revachol East transformed itself into the world's largest tax haven, with the international community's blessing. For the first time in a long time, it seemed like things were going somewhere. Were they? No. <laughs> it was a market mirage fueled by cocaine and quantitative easing. The 40s dispelled it like a cold splash, an Isla wide hangover, you might say. And here we are. She's like, no, you stupid bitch. Welcome to reality, baby. Okay, skill point. Thank you, Joyce. From the looks of it, the 50s haven't been much better for the zone of control. You can see it in her eyes, days slipping away. You don't seem to be thrilled. I've no right to be dissatisfied. This shirt is Barbara Muscova. This raincoat is impervious to rain and is guaranteed for a hundred years. My daughters will wear it. No, it's just... Impervious to rain. We could have had so much more. Every one of us. If only we played it right. I feel her. What would you have done differently? Good question. What would you have done differently? Hey, I asked the question first, and I don't have the mental fortitude to go into that right now. No, her first. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I would have killed more. 400 million, if that's what it took. Uh, I asked you, who are you in all this? And I asked you. Oh my god. Past less detective of the citizens' militia. What insight has acute encephalopathy given to you? It would have killed more people. Uh, don't know what I would have done differently. It would have killed more people. I see. A tenth of humanity. The key of history is in the lock. Keep turning at any cost. Uh, at any cost until humanity is free and the age of capital is part. Told us it's uh, 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 uh.
Well, I thought it was going to be a joke, and apparently this is an actual option. Past? That's what Debriva, the leader of the Communards, said before she got a bullet in her head. Don't get me wrong. Capital is finished. But understand this. Its end won't free anyone. It will only lead to more suffering. <clears throat> Opinions expressed here do not reflect <laughs> the official position of the RCM. Kim, once again. I love him. And what is your official position, Lieutenant? My position, ma'am? My parents got ripped to shreds in the revolution. I would have gone the same way. I was saved by being two years old. That's my position. The abattoir. Understandable. I've had... That's enough about the times. They are what they are. Who knows? An afterbloom may yet come. Anyway, enough sentimentality. Is there anything else you want to know? Now's your chance. Ask her who she is. She won't get out this time. Okay. Seriously. I want to know what you are. Hmm. She won't maneuver her way out of this one. Stop dodging. What are you? I am the vilest of the vile. A traitor. A devourer of nations and infants. I am an ultra. Dios mio. Draw across. A liberal. Holy shit. Cool, I liberate pretty hard myself. I don't understand what's so vile about that. Wait, what's an ultra? An ultra liberal. It's a type of liberal from the revolution. It's uh, not the moderate kind. Cool, I liberate pretty hard myself. No, not like me. I am the nether creature of the forbidden swamp who pushed the king under a shit wagon and betrayed the revolution. Are you liberated enough to offer up your home on a plate for financial colonists? No, I think not. Tell me, now that I've uncoiled myself, do you find me frightening? In her green eyes you see a mixture of truth and self-satire. Decades of guilt and pride. Uh, her monster, I forgive you. I forgive you, but only because you're charming. I don't care. I don't care. Like, I don't feel strongly about this one way or the other. A fitting punishment to be forgotten, if not forgiven. Save a prayer for us in our chateaus on Azon and in Stella Maris. When the dust settled, the liberals were the only ones left to clean up the mess. By virtue of their survival, they were handed enormous power to shape the future. This was all our last generation managed. Would you have done something differently? With due respect to our overlords, the eternal caretaker government that keeps Martinez a monument to the efficacy of its artillery. Holy shit. I would not have relinquished sovereignty to the coalition. Not here in Martinez, and not in the Stella Maris or Delta Beachheads either. If not for my own sake, then for my daughters. We had an obligation to defend our sovereignty. We should have burned the whole Isola down rather than let them have it. Dark orange flames reflect in her green eyes. An oil fire on the ocean. You're a smart woman, you're a patriot, you have daughters. Uh, you're a patriot. Yes, I suppose I am. But I wouldn't be a patriot anywhere but here. Seditious talk, man. And you're a smart woman. Perhaps. My intellectual vanity will be my undoing. It tends to be a lot of people's undoing. You're no dummy yourself. So am I no or intellectual uh, uh okay, so, so am I, I guess. A smart boy getting smarter <laughs> on basic term of reality at a time. Okay, well, that was enlightening. Yes. Whatever else I am, I'm also a mother. 
and a wife. Now, shall we return to reality? No, that's good. Deuces. Glad to have been of assistance. The little that I know. Anything else? Okay. Wow, you work hard. I do? Oh, yes. You hustle. You're a provider. It's tough out there, but you keep it real and provide. This looks like the thumb guy from Spy Kids. Or like the fucking face hugger. I guess I do. What hard work do I do exactly? Look at yourself. <clears throat> You're a human pedometer. You must have walked 200,000 steps down cracked asphalt, mosaic, sand, and linoleum after you re-emerged. That is the sign of a hustler who never gives up. The world is harsh and people are evil. You didn't make it that way. And you won't let it break you. Well, you ride. Joyce? She's clipping through the, the fucking... Whatever it is. Rich people are just built different, I guess. Uh, okay, I completely did not hear this. Uh, that is a sign of a hustler who never gives up. The world is harsh and people are evil. You didn't make it that way and you won't let it break you. You ride. Yeah, I ride. I fucking ride till I die, bitch. Not sure I ride. That's just what it's like. Life and death. But you got gills on your side, baby. Got those black papers with the faces of the innocents on them. You bring in the Franco Negros and the Solas. It ain't easy, but you do it. Day in and day out. You didn't make the rules, but you won't lose. You're a cop and a sprinter and a money printer. I mean, yeah, I did take that bribe from that Joyce woman. You could say I took some money from... Oh. I can't. Yeah, I've made some gills for sure. Oh yeah, you took that bribe hard. You're a killer. You didn't log that in as a donation either. You don't log any of that shit in. You're a straight rider. Yeah, you're in the sales business. Shake them for shit and then pawn it off. Law officer style. Sure, sure. And has it been easy? Is life easy? Have you not gone into cardiac arrest? Are you not about to have an anxiety attack or shoot yourself in the mouth? But you still hustle 24-7, ride or die. Now, ask yourself. Yeah, that's relatable. Are you rich? No. That's right. You work harder than anyone. You almost rode yourself to the grave and you're still practically a hobo. Why is that? Oh boy, it's because that Gart guy is riding my ass. The system is broken. There's a market for corrupt cops out there, but the... Uh, fucking taxes, man. That's right. 100%. Fucking G-Man's got his jam-covered sticky fingers in your pocket, stealing from you every time you buy, sell, walk, talk, Fart so much as sneeze. <laughs> they said fart. Our tax is almost non existent in the Gossam estate. That is Revachon. Really? Every time I sneeze? Every time you wipe your ass, they got their direct and their indirect modes of taxation sales tax, excise duty, extraction tax, alimony. One tax that doesn't even have a name. Plus, there's the stuff people in other countries pay for that makes them ask for more money from you. Here, total tax duties add up to 98% of all your money. <laughs> okay, you sure that seems like a pretty big number? This isn't helping me solve my money problem. It's only making me into a free market type. No fucking way, I guess. I'm a free market fundamentalist now. 
I don't know what's happening, but I think anything the game gives me, sure, why not? I'm just here for the ride. Here you go, hustler. Fight the righteous fight. Free the people. Keep it real. Keep it street. Keep foaming at the mouth furiously on the tax issue. What's this? We're getting reports of normal, <laughs> reasonable, temperate, political opinions somewhere in Martinez. You must be mistaken. I'm a real radical. That's me, Mr. Reasonable. Someone's got to keep it sane around here. This is because I keep saying none of the above to political stuff, isn't it? It's also about that, but it's also more. Perhaps it's the hangover. Perhaps it's a temporary surge of serotonin, but something tells you it's time to become a citizen of the kingdom of conscience. Oh, what's happening? I swear to God, today has just been, hey, here's a new thought and here's another one. And here's even more. I just want to open the gate. Uh, first, where is the kingdom of conscience? <laughs> no more talks on me up for a passport. No, I'm too fiery for this watercolor ideology. I'm trying to develop some more extreme and interesting opinions. It is not a place. It is a moment in time that can only arise in the right circumstances in all of human history. It's only been achieved a handful of times. How do you bring about those circumstances? Incrementally. History's greatest catastrophes have been brought about by people trying to make the world a better place. Too quickly. That's the genius of Dolores Day. She recognized that progress is meaningless if its gains are lost because of instability. Real, lasting change can only come about gradually. Increment by increment. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. I mean, as much as I would love it for change to be immediate and things to be better immediately, the world just kind of has an issue with that. Uh, what about all the things that are wrong now? Tisk tisk. Just because you live in the present doesn't mean you have the right to place your needs above the needs of the future. You may never live to see the kingdom of conscience. Your children may not. Even your grandchildren might not. But that's no excuse not to keep working. What rationality. What benevolence. Oh, God. Wait, is the kingdom of conscience really about doing things just or just preserving the status quo? OK, but uh, there are so many words that I've read today. OK, but what's the kingdom of conscience actually like? This sounds mega boring. Do you believe the status quo is preferable to chaos and bloodshed? Uh, I think things are not great and should change. But if sometimes change needs 400 million people getting shot in the head, then you've never lived through real chaos. Sometimes, in the face of great disaster, defending the status quo is progress. The kingdom is difficult to comprehend and even more difficult to describe, partly because humanity will need to discard many of the categories that define and limit it today. The kingdom of conscience is post-capitalist, post-national, it's also post-industrial, post-ideological, and even post-sexual. What? That seems... that's... Uh, sounds incredible. Let's go there right now. Uh, that seems fine. I still want to live for the present, though. Man, that sounds terrible. I don't think I want to be a moralist anymore.
I mean, if I opt in, it's just another thought. Fuck it. Slow down, Mr. Reasonable. Did you miss the part about compromising and taking things slow? Oh, right. Well, then let's get there eventually. That's right. Remember, real democracy is just around the corner for Rivershaw. When that real democracy kicks in, a long time from now, we are all going to be so much happier. Well, it's time to save. It's time to save. That's that was almost an hour that I spent. Oh no. Never mind. Okay. Okay, reality low down. Okay, it's time to go into thoughts. It's time to unlock one. I do not have skill points. Oh, I do. Okay. It's time to become racist. All right, well, this is what I love about this game. I don't know what's happening, but it's written so well that it makes me think about my own fucking morals and everything that I believe in. It was a pretty hollow statement, but like there are plenty of games that have tried to do something like this and have not done it well. I'm a minute late. That opens up at 10. If these fucking kids are still here, They've been here all day. An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material eat tonight. I'm saving. I've done this role like five times. Yeah, how he... He's been up there for a week. And I know it's like cold, but... I feel like if I wait any longer, his head is just going to come off. And then like... An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material eat tonight. Just splatter on the ground like a boomer. Please. Because it's nice and it reveals no... Fuck you. An inconspicuous pile of the... Because there's a secret door hidden behind the panels of Etonite. That's why they're too orderly. Pull the panels aside. There it is. You see a shabby little door. That had a lot more force to it than I thought it would have. What is this, Dan? A tool shed? Let's investigate. Kim just said, what's all this then? Uh, magnesium supplement. Oh, is this the hideout? Is this where fucking the kids live? Get out of the way or get fucked up. Be still, my beating heart. It's amphetamine. Sweet amphetamine. The lieutenant isn't studying the powder in the mirror. He's studying you. There's a good vague way to ask where he stands on drug use. Professionally, I mean. Uh... Yeah, this is where they live, I'm assuming. 
um, someone has taken narcotics here. Perhaps the police should interfere. I wasn't thinking about taking it, I swear. I was just thinking about justice. I've heard amphetamines make you a really good detective. Are you a really good detective? Uh, of course, detective. Swift justice. Don't worry, we don't have to investigate every trace of narcotics. Yeah, swift lightning justice. Faster, harder, justice. -er. See that ladder there? It's probably another way into the industrial harbor, no? A secret path the local kids use. Kim, I can talk to Kim. We should think about calling it today, maybe. The nights are still miserably cold this time of year. Uh, yes, my hostel room calls. We can pick up where we left off tomorrow morning. No, no, I wanna... We just found... We just found a way in. <gasps> Co... I'm on the roof. I'm on the roof. Kim, we're on the roof. We're not going to bed. Huh. <laughs> what the fuck? What is this control? Hey, Kim. This doorway is going to collapse soon. Restoration pillars. Fuck it. Postcard. Oh. I feel like I'm gonna fucking fall. Well. Okay, how do I get this? He's just flinging it around. Oh, I thought that was just... Looks like someone left his tarpaulin cloak hanging on the railing here. Look, Lieutenant. Someone left his cloak behind. When I'm moving my mouse for dialogue options, he moves the fucking flashlight. Yes, it's probably yours. It bears the RCM insignia, and you have a habit of being careless with your equipment. Yeah? You could probably make the jump. You look like you've done some track and field in your day. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Uh... The wind is aggressive up here. The lieutenant looks at the enormous crane towering in the distance over the container yard. The look in his eyes is a mix of the engineer-like interest and the wonder of a six-year-old seeing a horse for the first time. Oh. Motherfucker, now that's a huge crane. Let him have it. His eyes trace the crane's contour, as if trying to memorize its majestic shape. Then he notices your gaze. What gaze? I'm looking at in the ground. Yes, we were in the middle of something, uh, your clock. I'm going to break both of my legs. Uh, do you really think the cloak is mine? Should I go for it? Jump? The cloak? I do think it's yours, yes. As to whether you should go for it? Well, it doesn't seem too dangerous. Two meter stops? Whenever you're ready to do it, I'll be right behind you. The cloak looks like a bag of goodies floating in the wind. Who knows what its pockets may hide? Do I want a tip? I'll take a tip, sure. Pants. Take off the pants. <laughs> pants taken off. Oh.
No, I took the cum pants off immediately. Though these do. He's wearing long black socks. Although they, they look kind of brown, actually. All right. Saving. Yes? Nope. Never mind. A tarpaulin cloak is still caught on the railing. That's no one has claimed it for so their own. Low. Fuck it, I have 17. I've won worse. Oh god. Hello? Nope, no. That's still too high. What were you thinking? You're not a gymnast, you're a boxer. And you've climbed way too high up here. Okay, wait, what? Holy wow, that's high. Doesn't seem dangerous. The lieutenant must be crazy to suggest that. This is certain death. Okay. Instead of jumping, how about you just sit on the edge and just go down? Sure. Just be careful, okay? Looks like you almost strained a muscle there. I was under the assumption we could ask the leader of this union to help us get this body down. This is why we're here, right? It doesn't wait for you to answer. Or it could be that we are just exploring. He's thinking you've forgotten where you are again. <laughs> well... Well, can I go here? Oh, what is this? Money! There's money up here! Well... I got two more money. I have money to pay for my room tomorrow. How do I get down from here? Okay, I'm sorry, I can't just grab it? Kim, get on my shoulders. Well... Fuck you. Blind. I swear to God, he's going to start screaming. All right, time to go inside. <laughs> I'm just being an asshole. Oh, the music changed again. Heavy stool. Leave. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to try the smoking guy again. One last time, and then I'll, like, go to sleep. Can I also decide not to go to sleep? Like, does that affect me at all? Like, my idea is that 
going to sleep, you know, lets story things happen. This door is made. No one answers. We should return. No one answers. Right. We should return tomorrow. Fuck me. God damn it. I don't think it would be good for Harry to pull an all nighter either, but I'm afraid of missing things or like losing time. I already feel like I've wasted so much time walking around. Like, the body is still there on day one, and I feel like that was something I should have gotten handled already. You won't, don't worry, you still have plenty of stuff to do. I don't want to know how many days there are in this game, but can I do karaoke, please? No, I can't. I'm having, like... I'm playing this game as if it were... Actually, hang on. I can sell the postcard. I'm gonna do that first. I've never really played an RPG such as this one. The only thing I can compare it to is Pathologic. And I'm playing this game, sadly, as if it were that game. And in that game, you can't double back on your dialogue options. Once you follow through with something, that's pretty much it. So I'm kind of playing this game going one dialogue option and then not bothering to go back to check for other things. Greetings on this fine night. What brings you here? Uh, how come you're still open? The pawn shop is always open. Uh, is he high? Okay, he definitely is high. Whatever it is, you've probably done it, and many other things besides. But you can't cut through the jumble of sensations to get to the answer. Looking at his wares, talking to him, that might give you more clues. Everyone is on drugs. A guarded man like him wouldn't tell you if you asked out loud. Um, I have something to sell. Sure. Let me have a look. I'm not purchasing any more clothing at the moment. And especially that tie. It swallows photons around it. I have no need for necrotic objects. Your mother is a necrotic object! I'm fun! Look at me sparking in the light of the projector! Okay. Anything else you're thinking of selling? Here. Not selling those. Can I sell the picture of the dead body? Oh, no. I don't like those kinds of objects. No sale. Uh, do you know what the tattoos mean? A photic path. Counter-radiance network. Anti-magnetism. It's darkness. That's all I know. Sell me something lighter. You have absolutely no idea what aphotic baths are, but the tattoos on the man are not that. Another time, perhaps. Uh, you might be able to invade it. Invade? Fucking Christ. You might be able to aid our investigation. I doubt it but I can try and answer any questions you may have. Uh, know anything about the recent hanging? I do my best to keep my distance from all manner of butchery. Bad for business. Bad for everyone. Think you could help me get the corpse out of there? The corpse behind the hostel, I show. I don't have a truck with a mounted platform or anything of that sort myself. Does no one have a ladder? Or like a bunch of crates I can get on top of? Ask around the harbor. There might be some workers there who'd be willing to help. The pawnbroker's gaze is already fixed on the dancing colors. I want to ask about my gun again. Sure thing. Sure, man. All right. A typical Martinez streetlight sits 
among assorted floor and table lamps. Is that a street light? Yes, officer. As you see, it's in perfect working order. Where did you get this from the street? It was brought to me to be altered. We are not here to investigate the theft of city property. You have to admit it's rather clever what he's done with it. What is he done with it, man? Oh, the gaze run over the streetlight. The light pole has been carefully cut and the wiring has been redone and attached to a standard indoor plug. The light buzzes faintly, but persistently. It's right here. It's like this thing. This would make quite a statement in your living room. How much for the streetlight? 700 real. A bargain, I dare say. The 700 sounds about right. I imagine it wasn't easy sawing that off the street lamp. Hey, I don't know where it came from, but it's not every day you get to buy and sell something so extraordinary. All right. Time to... <laughs> Time to go sleepy.